knowledge for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Uh, reminder to uh, silence your cell phones and meeting documents are next to Mr. Kelly. And if you need a listening device, Robert can help you with that. With that, we'll begin routine business. Item one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. So, motion and a second to approve the agenda. Is there any changes or corrections? No amendments. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item two is to approve the county commission minutes of November 5th, 2013. Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second <coughs> to approve the minutes. Is there any changes or corrections? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item three, our bills be paid in the amount of $283,564.49. Pay the bills. Second. Motion and a second to pay the bills as stated. Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item four, our reports. The Minnehaha County Sheriff's Department report for October 2013. The Minnehaha County Human Services report for October 2013. And the Minnehaha County Regional Juvenile Detention Center report as of October 2013. They've all been received and are on file in the auditor's office. Item five is to approve uh, personnel actions. Is there a motion to approve personnel action? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve personnel action. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to abstain on this vote. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Barth. Mr. Barth is going to abstain. Uh, any other comments? If not, those in favor of approving personnel actions, say aye. 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 Those opposed? We have four yeses and one abstention. There are no applications for abatement today. Next item are notices and requests. Item A is to authorize the auditor to publish a notice to bidders for the purchase of one mobile morgue trailer for mass fatality events. Lynn, would you like to make any comments about that? Sure, Commissioners. As you know, the uh, county coroner's office, Dr. Ken Snell and myself, have been working uh, all year on developing a mass fatalities plan. In conjunction with the state of South Dakota and other stakeholders around our area, uh, earlier in the year you uh, authorized submission and were uh, receipt of a $50,000 grant. Uh, since then, Dr. Snell and I have been working along with some other folks on putting together the specs uh, that you see and that will be published uh, for one mobile morgue trailer. Uh, obviously, we hope it doesn't have to be used, but uh, with Minneapolis County having the only uh, forensic pathologist, medical examiner in the county. Uh, we've been working with the state to make this happen. Should and if an event like this happens within eastern South Dakota or the, the greater re region uh, within our area. So I would request the commission to authorize the auditor to publish and uh, we'll accept bids for the next 30 days and then we'll bring it back for final approval uh, after the proper time has passed. Thank you, Lynn. Any questions for Lynn? Is there a motion? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, publishing of a bid. Notice. Of publisher to Request publish the <coughs> notice for bidders to purchase one mobile morgue trailer for mass fatality events. Any I should have said that as my motion. I'm sorry. No, no, I should have read it. My problem. Um, any comments? If Mr. not, Chairman? Mr. Bart? I just would say that, you know, the, We'll have situations where a town could, a smaller town might be destroyed to the point that their local mortuary is de destroyed, or it may be that there will be a, a, a murderous incident of some type, the, the mass casualties that they need to do autopsies on site. And this isn't just a re refrigeration truck. This is to allow for embalming. It's to allow for autopsies, as I understand it. Is that yeah, correct. Um, you know. Our plan would probably be if the event happens in Minneapolis County that they would just, uh, Dr. Snell would handle those folks within the current system that he uh, works with, with Sanford Health System. But this is really for the outlying events um, out in the greater area of South Dakota. And um, as you know, that's why they're paying for the, you know, the $50,000 that we hope we can get this for uh, is for those services. And Dr. Snell already has an agreement with them on regular autopsies that he does. And, and we'll follow some of that same pathway that 
um, if an event happens out there that uh, this is required, uh, that would not, like I said, be only able to do those autopsies, but then the embalming that might be required out there. Question. Yes. Uh, if you use the mass fatality van or trailer, who, do the volunteers take it out? You know, currently it's uh, going to be uh, Dr. Snell's uh, specs are for a fifth wheel, so we would work with the county highway shop uh, to transport it out there, DJ and his folks, or the state DOT. Um, and then it would, we're still working on the actual manning of it. Some of that is dependent on caseload, uh, unfortunately, and some of those other things. But it's going to be a group effort. Uh, if and when this happens. Well, outside of Minneapolis County, uh, it, will we incur inspections expenses or will they be reimbursed? Or the, in, the intent is is that Dr. Snow would bill for those expenses the same as he currently bills for expenses if he does an autopsy out of Davidson County or Hyde County or any one of those. So, but the highway, if the highway department has to provide staff or that would know? all that would all be rolled in similar to what he does now. Oh, okay. So. <clears throat> Any other questions for Lynn? <coughs> if not, we do have a motion and we do have a second to approve. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay, motion unanimously passes. Thank Thanks. you, sir. Item B, a notice from Abate of Sioux Falls to conduct a fundraising raffle to benefit the organization. The drawing is to be held on March 23rd, 2014. That is also placed on file in the auditor's office. There are no planning and zoning notices, and there are no petition for compromise of lien. The next item is opportunity for a public comment. Does anyone have any items that they would like to bring up at this time that are not on the agenda? Mr. Barth? I actually would like to, if, if no one else is going to speak, I'd like to just go back to an item for a second. Sir? I just want to comment on the applications for abatement. There were, again, none. It was only just a couple of years ago that we had three and four a week. And uh, uh, I've got to say that clearly the Equalization Department has pulled up their socks and fixed whatever was was wrong there because we used to have them all the time. Oh. And uh, now we're getting very few. Oh. Good observation. Uh, any other comments? If not, we'll go into regular business. Item number 10. Item number 10 is consider an application from the retreat at Pointers Ridge for a consume and blend alcohol beverage license. Um, the auditor's office has received the, an application from Deb Klebanoff, who owns the property, and she's requesting approval for the retreat of Pointers Ridge to serve wine and beer during the holiday jam with the Head Brothers event that's on December 3rd, 2013. They're not going to be selling any alcohol beverages. They're just providing beer and wine for the people at the event. Um, the application has been forwarded to the Sheriff's Department, State's Attorney, and Planning and Zoning Office, and there have no, been no re objections or concerns that have been reported. And I thought Deb was going to be here today, but apparently she's not. So if you have any questions for me, I'll try to answer them. Okay. Any questions for Cindy? If not, is there a motion? Motion approved. Second. Uh, beverage. <laughs> There's a motion and a second to approve the... Uh, an application to consume alcohol beverages on December 3rd at the retreat at Pointers Ridge. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion unanimously passes. Item 11 is consider motions to approve actions associated with Minnehaha County tax deed properties. Bob Litz. Morning, Commission. Bob Litz with the Auditor's Office. and. Uh, talk to you about the tax deed properties that uh, were uh, uh, delayed from the previous action that we took. The appraisal board met again on Thursday, October 31st, 2013, did a physical survey of the remaining properties taken by tax deed. They recommended the following. RDIDs be declared surplus and donated to the City of Sioux Falls for drainage inventory. Uh, 66872, 79670. 79671, 79671, 79974 5, 80226, 80226, 80272, 80293, 80294, 80295, 80296, 80297, 80298, 80299, 80300, 80301, 80302, 80303, 80304, 80305, 80306, 80307, 80308, 80309, 80310, 80311, 80312, 80313, 80314, 80315, 80318, 80319, 80320, 
for your consideration. Does anyone have any questions or for Mr. Litz? Uh, Mr. Barth? You know, on the property uh, 80746, it's got a, a assessed value of something, and yet we're planning on giving it to the city. I see there's quite a few judgments against the parent, uh, the former owner, uh, but uh, if it has a chance of recouping some of the thousands of dollars, why wouldn't we want to sell it? Uh, well, uh, Commissioner and, and, and Dick and Cindy asked about that particular property last week, and that's why I, I, I put those things on there. Uh, the previous owners had tried to build a house out there for about a dozen years, and the neighbors to the east all objected to the way uh, uh, they were going to put the house on the property. It probably rolls off from the curbside. You've got about six or seven feet that sidewalk would be uh, uh, okay on. Then from that, you've got a 26 or a 27 degree angle down the hill. Uh, very expensive lot to build. I think that when they bought it, uh, uh, they probably didn't uh, uh, anticipate all the expenses that it would take for the over digging and uh, probably the bridging on the foundation uh, for putting a property on there. And it's, it's just not a suitable property for, for building on. Uh, you know. So uh, while it might have a high uh, value listed on there, uh, it would be my observation and the people on the, uh, the board of uh, appraisal that uh, the lot simply is not buildable and that it should be. Uh, and today it is drainage uh, and it's functioning as such. So. I don't know if that answers your question or not, but it's, a, it's just not a practical lot. It looks good from the air. It looks good on paper, but once you get there and look over the edge, it's not. I, I also did contact the neighbor uh, that is to the west of that and, and inquired to him if he was interested in it, and, and he said uh, uh, he would much rather have the city take uh, that lot over than, than him. So. Uh, Mr. Kelly. So. Tell me again, what happens to the liens? Well, if the city gets it, uh, it's their practice that they hire an attorney to get uh, get these uh, liens and these these uh, actions uh, taken off the property and put onto the individual. Okay. I think we had some conversation a couple weeks ago or whatever that the board met, but they didn't do a, I guess, a personal review of this. They did a GIS review yes. or whatever. Did they go out and look at these? We problems? went out to every one of them this time, okay. Commissioner, and uh, we had trouble locating some of them because they weren't very wide. But we uh, had pretty good, uh, pretty good indication of where they were at, and uh, most of them are, are clearly drainage. Uh, they either had water on them, they were next to the levee, uh, next to BMP ponds, uh, uh, all that there. The only one that was really in question, and I went and investigated it, was the one that uh, Commissioner Barth had questions about because I certainly did too. Okay. I believe we need to take each one of these uh, items individually. Um, is anyone have any other questions for Mr. Litz? I have one other question. I'm sorry. Yes, I guess it's probably for Kirsten. You know, in the rural area, if there's a, if a person owns land, let's say on an island in the Big Sioux River, uh, their neighbors have to allow them access to it if there's some way crossing their other property. So let's say that there's a eight foot by eight foot square in my backyard that I don't own, do I have to allow the property owner of that property within the city to get to it so I could park my car there? Basically there's a uh, there's a process in place where you can petition, I believe, a judicial authority to allow you access to that. I couldn't give you chapter and verse of what that would be, but there are mechanisms in the law that disfavor um, having properties be an island so to speak, without some sort of access. Um, also, when lots are parceled out, generally it's disfavored to even create those in the first place, and that's usually the first uh, line of defense in that ever happening. But if it does, there are provisions in place where you can petition for some sort of easement or right to access, so. Thanks. Any other questions? If not, uh, let's do item A, which is to accept the report of the surplus property by the appraisal board. Motion to accept the report. A second. We have a motion and a second to accept the report. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, motion passes unanimously. Item B is, uh, I'm not going to read all those numbers, to declare the surplus and authorize a transfer. Motion to approve. Second. second. A motion and a second to uh, declare 
the surplus and the tr authorized transfer to the city of Sioux Falls. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion unanimously passes. And then item C is to declare property 82484 as surplus and transfer to the adjacent property owner. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion unanimously passes. That's your break for today, Cindy. You have to read it. <laughs> we will Thank get these properties transferred to the proper owners. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Item 12 is to authorize the chairman to sign 2014 lease agreements between Minnehaha County and the Sioux Valley Gene Genealogical Society and Minnehaha County Historical Society for office space in the Old Courthouse Museum. Bill Hoskins. Good morning. Uh, Bill Hoskins, director of the Sioux Land Heritage Museum. Uh, these are annual leases between the Sioux Valley Genealogical Society, which occupies about 600 square feet on the second floor of the Old Courthouse Museum and, uh, and Minnehaha County, and also a lease between the Minnehaha County Historical Society and Minnehaha County for about 330 square feet that they occupy both on first and second floor. Um, these are <coughs> annual leases. Um, it's We've been doing leases since I think about 2001. Uh, it, uh, they are, the space is being provided to those societies for free. It does require, I believe under state law, a unanimous vote of the commission to provide space free for those organizations. Thank you, Bill. Any other? Want to have any questions for Bill? Is there a motion? There is a motion. And the motion is? To allow these leases. Okay. Is there a second? Second. So, we have a motion and a second to approve the lease. Any other comments? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Item 13 is Minnehaha County Commissioner Liaison Reports. Does anyone have any liaison reports this morning? Um, just have one. Commissioner I Iber. The other one. Um, and that was, uh, I met with highway department this last week, and they are going to rent some storage to put some of their summer equipment inside, just locking space out there on their own property. And then when uh, summer rolls around, they'll be taking that out and putting some of our more expensive winter equipment into that same storage unit. So. Okay. Any other liaison? Commissioner Barth? I'm going to have more than one thing to say. Um, Cindy and I both attended a, an event at the Falls Overlook Cafe the other day talking about housing in Sioux Falls. It was really a, a well done event. It had uh, some uh, slight media coverage. I thought that uh, our own Carol Muller uh, was absolutely brilliant in her presentation talking about uh, the issues that uh, uh, where Minnehaha County steps in to help. We also had uh, uh, Dr. Celeste Uthi Burrow from the Sioux Falls School District talking about homeless students and uh, homelessness and how they, they calculate it. I think they indicated they had 864 homeless students uh, in uh, Sioux Falls schools and that included about 50 or 60 who actually were on their own. And not, not staying at grandma's house but actually living somewhere each day uh, hand to mouth on their own. And then we had a, uh, a person with the federal government working with the health department, uh, the city health department, uh, Vanessa Sweeney, um, also did a, a credible uh, job. I, I really think uh, it probably would be not, it would be good for us to, to listen to the, the woman from the uh, school district and uh, the one from the, who's working with the health department. Darren Smith did a, a reasonable presentation as well, talking about uh, the city's efforts, uh, which uh, they're diverse, if uh, nothing else. Anyway, that was really a, an interesting event. I had to leave before the end in order to attend the museum board meeting. But Cindy, do you have any other? We just finished up after Jeff left with some brainstorming, and everybody we met in <clears throat> groups of about four people came up with an. Every table had to come up with an idea. There were about 90 people that attended the event. Obviously, they didn't all stay clear to the end because it started at 7:30 and concluded around noon, or 12:30, something like that. But um, I think they came up with some good ideas that uh, 
Stacy Teason will be going forward with, you know, at least looking at them and seeing if there's any possibilities with them. It was a very well attended and a very large group of different people from different resources in our area. So it was a very good, very good event. And on a related uh, issue, uh, you may have seen that the Salvation Army is opening their, well, uh, their warming center a little later, and uh, as cold weather has hit a little earlier, and so I'm not sure exactly where things are with that. Uh, but uh, clearly it's got to be a challenge for those people who have no uh, indoor place to stay. Commissioner Kelly. Well, Gerald and I attended a meeting Saturday morning at the chamber, uh, the governor called, and the governor and six of his staff members, Dusty Johnson and uh, uh, Pat Costello, all these people, uh, purpose to, to, and I'm going to let Gerald expound on it because I don't remember what things like he does. <laughs> but um, the purpose basically was the state was coming down here saying what, and they asked one question primarily. They, first, the uh, Development, um, Development Foundation gave an overview of what's been going on, and there's a lot. And um, they talked about the the uh, that whole northwest area and what the possibilities are there then the question that was sent back to the tables and there were what six tables of six or eight um, was what one thing can the state of South Dakota do to help us um, each table broke into a discussion area uh, I think Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the bottom line was everybody came back to uh, per, to availability of employees, and um, it, it was fairly well a consensus on it. I think, and there were about five or six ideas. And Gerald, you may remember them better than I, but uh, I thought it was a good session. It was an opportunity to talk to uh, to the governor and his staff on a one-on-one -on -one for a few minutes before the meeting and. And uh, they understand 25% of the sales tax collected in the state is collected in Sioux Falls area. And uh, I got a hunch, probably the same way with the number of building permits and stuff. But I don't know, you got any extra comments to it, Gerald? Uh, I think it was just a kickoff to discuss, frankly, the economic development not only here, but to bring that to the whole state to try to support some of the things that Sioux Falls has done and would be willing to uh, consider in other locations and that the uh, ideas that were presented will be uh, brought back to the group at some point when they're uh, prioritized and uh, how they get funded that's a legislative issue so uh, at this point I think it's just a working document and a conversation that uh, was to begin the conversation for next year's legislative session. So I don't think there's any firm plans at this point other than uh, so the brainstorming that was done. It, it was a good opportunity for the governor to hear directly from the people down here as to what, you know, what affects and what their needs are. Interestingly, on the, uh, at least my opinion is on the employment, you know, getting people in, getting workers in, uh, the state has to be careful because they work for the whole state and we're stealing a lot of workers out of the rest of the state. So, you know, it's difficult for them to help us from that standpoint, um, getting them from out of state, getting people to move in uh, that have technical skills particularly is, is important. But there's some conflicts there, but the state now understands what we need down here. And uh, there is also one of the concerns is that there are no big like hundred thousand square foot buildings available that are built on a spec basis and part of that problem is that it takes three to five years to fill a spec building normally if you've got a big building like that uh, nobody wants to carry it um, I suggested to our group that perhaps we look at possibility of tax abatement until they're occupied and instead of getting them into tiffs and stuff you know the day they become occupied or rented that then the taxes kick in and then you got some incentive to an investor because the building really doesn't cost us anything until until you start employing people in it and everything else so I don't know it's one of the things I hope they'll look at any other new business Jeff 
just want to comment uh, that a fellow Greg Spindler is coming to town. He's going to speak at our breakfast on Thursday morning at uh, the Havy in South Minnesota. Uh, Greg and his wife lost their daughter here in South Dakota in this tragic uh, event out in Pickstown where a, a drunken driver uh, went off the road 200 feet and hit his uh, daughter and another fellow, killing them both, uh, dragging them an additional 120 feet. And he's uh, an advocate of raising the tax on alcohol for enforcement purposes. And he's going to uh, come and talk to us and uh, then go on to Pier, where he has uh, hopes to meet with the governor's staff. Uh, he's already been in touch with them previously. Uh, he's making this his mission at this point. And I think uh, it would be uh, an interesting day to be at the breakfast. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any other new business? Commissioner? Well, no. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, we'll go to old business. Does anyone have any old business? I think John okay, was first. Well, I was just going to comment that in the paper today there was an obituary about a person who was, quite honestly, a partner of Minneapolis County for many years. Uh, Bob Baker over at First National Bank passed away. And uh, it was really uh, uh, too bad because uh, I know Minneapolis County, we use First National Bank as one of our uh, depositing institutions for many years. And, of course, uh, uh, Bob went out of his way to be a, a good citizen in this community, so it's real tragedy. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Any other comments? I was just going to say, I think that uh, the MOU on the museum project has uh, gone out to the city, and we'll be looking at that in joint session, as I understand it. Okay. If not, uh, we do need to go in exec session this morning for our personnel and litigation issues. Is there uh, a motion? There is. Second. A motion and a second to go into exec session for personnel and litigation. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Uh,